So today guys, we have a very special vehicle. This is a 1999 Chevy Silverado 1500 with a Duramax diesel. Yes, they did make these in a suburban form in the 1500 back in the day. This is like a unicorn. So, but today it is snowing, it's cold as hell, but we're gonna wash the outside. We're gonna get in the garage. We're gonna polish the entire paint. We're gonna polish the chrome bumpers, clean this thing up, make it look like new, and then apply a ceramic coating to this thing. It's gonna look insane. So without further ado, hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and let's get washing. Now with the initial pressure washing done, we're gonna bust out the foam cannon, spray this thing with a nice soapy blue concoction, let that soak into any remaining dirt on the surface before we get to the wash mid phase. Now when it comes to cleaning wheels, I usually just go straight for a wheel acid. This helps break down any of that brake dust that's been caked onto the surface. Um, but with these wheels in particular, they are older, they are chrome plated, and that chrome plating has actually peeled off in a few spots and it's kind of degrading. I mean, this is an older truck. These things need to be recoded in all honestness. Um, but it took off most of it, and, but there's a lot of pitted staining, like I mentioned, because it is older and degraded. But we're gonna clean them up as best as possible, and they do look a lot better than they did originally.
Now for all you purists out there, I did not two bucket meth the outside. And the main reason is one, it's 35 degrees out. So getting this thing washed as fast as possible is more of a priority. But also since we are doing a paint correction, any dirt that gets kind of caked into that sponge that kind of gets carried over from panel to panel is minimal. And, and it's also not gonna be a huge deal because we are paint correcting the car at the end of the day. Now my Superman cape here is actually the Fox Clean drying towels that I sell. You guys can pick them up foxclean.com after this video, but this one single towel will dry, dry the entire exterior of this vehicle. It is a stellar towel. I can't talk about them enough. Check out the reviews on the website. Everyone will vouch for me on this one. Now this is why this truck is so special. You're right. Here's everything we're gonna need for the actual ceramic coating polishing and all the stuff. So first we're gonna start with the clay bar, which is gonna remove any of the surface contaminants like this stuff, the bug guts and anything on the surface, making sure it's all clean of any debris on the paint before we bust out and use our microfiber cutting pads. Some of these are dirtier, which we're gonna use on the bumpers and chrome, but the clean ones are the ones that we use in the paint. We got our two random orbital polishers, our smaller circular one for those tight and hard to reach spots. Plenty of microfiber towels, which you guys can get from Fox Clean. These are the most plush towels you'll ever find. Can't beat the price. Here's the polishes we're gonna use. We're gonna be using our Ultra Cut Compound from Meguiar's and then our finishing polish as well. We're gonna try this one first to see how the cutting works on the light swirl marks and to see if we need to step up to the harder, um, more grittier compound. Otherwise, we're gonna start with this. And then once we get the car completely polished, Afterwards, you wanna use isopropyl alcohol and this removes any of the contaminants, any oils or anything from the polishing phase or any debris before we apply our ceramic coating. Plus we have a glass ceramic coating we're gonna put on too on the windows. But first things first, clay bar.
Now when it comes to clay barring, usually you get a large brick in any kit that you buy or whenever you buy it online in a plastic container. That one brick, in my opinion, should go for about one car, maybe two if you're lucky, depends on how contaminated it is. But when you're doing like a truck like this, I would say one side of it is a piece of the clay. In the back and the front, you can use the second clay uh, piece or chunk of it. Um, but usually that one single clay bar is kind of what I use for this entire vehicle because you want to try to ensure you can you uh, and trap those contaminants on the surface inside that clay and as you use it and over that soapy water it will degrade and kind of get more spongy and not as uh, effective as it was when it was new. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the first pass. It's kind of a test pass to see if the light cutting compound is sufficient enough to remove any scratches on the surface. My prediction was it wouldn't be just because of the age of this vehicle and it's never been paint corrected. Um, but I went ahead and started with it originally just to see how much of an uh, impact it had before stepping up to the higher grade, uh, stronger uh, polishing compound.
So this is really, really hard to see, but you can see that line right there. That is clean and polished, and that is all oxidation on the surface of this white paint that is causing it to not be as brilliant of a white as it should. So right there is that line, right down the middle. Now for chrome bumpers like this, or, or chrome plate or, paint, or uh, polished bumpers, I honestly just go straight with the cutting compound that I use in the paint and an older microfiber cutting pad. It works brilliantly. I don't go to any metal polish or anything like that just because you're trying to remove just the surface contaminants. You're not trying to remove a ton of material. Um, it's just more of a, a polishing aspect and it turned out amazing. I was really happy with how these turned out. Now for the headlights, I'm actually gonna be using the Cerakote headlight kit that they offer. Um, it works insanely well, it helps. It's a wet sanding kind of kit, but then you have a ceramic coating that goes over top of it to make sure that that clear, clarity and also the yellowing doesn't come back. So I'll have that linked in the description box below and any of the products and any of the tools that I use is always linked for you guys to check out down in the description box.
Now that all the polishing done, the headlights are done, the windshield's been coated, um, we're gonna go ahead and use isopropyl alcohol. This is 70% that you can buy at any drugstore. And the main reason why we're using this on the paint is to remove any of the oils or residue from the polishing phase or fingerprints, um, anything like that from the paint surface before we apply that ceramic coating. Now for ceramic coatings, they're not super difficult to apply. They do take a lot longer than just a wax, wax on, wax off type of thing. Um, you have to apply it in a certain fashion, let it flash, which takes about two to five minutes, and then you're gonna buff it off. But the buffing off is actually not a whole lot if you apply it correctly. Um, but you're using these applicator sponges to uh, apply it onto the paint, and you apply it in one direction back and forth, and then you're gonna go the opposite direction in a crosshatch pattern. And then you're just gonna let it sit and flash over onto the paint itself, which, um, you know, it's, it's not difficult to do if you wanna tackle something like this at home. Um, but I will say that a lot of the pro-grade, uh, higher-end ceramic coatings like I use, you can't just purchase those online. Um, usually you have to be a licensed professional or have a connection with a uh, distributor. Um, but the ones that you can find online apply the same sort of fashion. They just might not last as long as the professional grade stuff. Now typically on this channel, I don't do just exterior details, kind of showing you the process that I do for a lot of these clients and customers that I detail and, and do their ceramic coatings on. But today, I hope you guys learned something on how to apply a ceramic coating, how to polish, how to clean up paint on your own vehicle person that you can use these tips and tricks yourself. Um, and if you like this video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and make sure you head over to the next video that you see on screen, and I'll see you over there in a minute.